Good morning and welcome to the second day of the Global EV Charging Webinar event on EV Charging Best Practices and Power Quality. Yesterday the focus was on these best practices for EV Charging in general. This day we will zoom in to the subject of power quality. It is still possible to register for the other webinars today via our website and all the webinars will be recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel. So keep an eye on the Airlight NL YouTube channel if you missed any of the presentations and please subscribe so you can receive notifications. Uh, Tim Slange and I will be hosting the webinars. Uh, during each webinar, one of us will be the host and the other one will be monitoring the questions log and will select questions to be answered after each presentation. You can find the question box in the GoToWebinar tool. Uh, and this event has been made possible with support from the Progressus project. Um, this project is supported by the Horizon 2020 program from the European Commission and focuses on the improving the efficiency and grid integration of the next generation energy supply infrastructure. Now, it is my pleasure to announce the first presenters of today. Charmista Bhattacharya and Marvin Weiland, who both work at the Asset Management Department of the Dutch grid operator Enexis. Jamista works as a strategic consultant and holds a PhD in electrical engineering from the Eindhoven Technical University. And Marvin Wijnand works as, a, works as a consultant and holds a Bachelor of Science in electrical energy engineering from Mindesheim University of Applied Science, Zwolle. They both have been active in several smart charging and power quality related projects and will now present on the power quality issues in the distribution network, especially on EV related network issues. Marvin, Shemista, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I would like to show you uh, today our NXS uh, power quality issues. Just a moment, let me first. Uh, 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 Shamisa, do you see, see the screen? Yeah, we, we can see your screen, sir. So. Okay, yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, it is really pleasure to uh, represent NXIS uh, uh, to this uh, event. Uh, I would like to uh, tell you about the power quality issues in NXIS networks and what we think uh, will be the impact of electric vehicles in our network. So myself and uh, my colleague Marvin will be presenting. So the content of the presentation looks like that. First, I would like to give you a small introduction about NXS Group. Uh, next, I will tell you a little bit about the key uh, important figures uh, of NXS as a utility. Next, I will tell you about the new challenges related to energy transition and the new power quality problems in general in our network. Then I would like to tell you some interesting EV related, uh, related projects wh where NXIS has participated with, along with other partners. And finally, my colleague will tell you more about the impact of EV related uh, issues, simulations. So this figure indicates the uh, total NXIS. NXIS group is a big uh, company and under the holder of uh, NXIS uh, group. We have uh, utility part, NXIS NetB here, and we do only the regulated activities for the networks. And we have the other two parts, uh, Impulse and Fidura, they do the more commercial activity and uh, Fidura does for the metering and Impulse does mainly uh, energy transition related research projects. So in NXS, we have almost 4,700 people who are really working hard every day to ensure a reliable grid so that we can satisfy our customers. And we are operating in the Dutch society for, then, for more than a century. So yeah, in between, we have changed our names couple several times, but yeah, from, 2009, I think uh, we are in excess. 
And in NXS, we really promote energy transition, and therefore we work and in, along with other partners, and we uh, encourage different uh, partners um, to coordinate with them, and also we share our knowledge to make the energy transition possible. Let me tell you some uh, key figures of NXS. As you can see in the left figure, the all green shaded areas are the NXS operational areas. So we have we are the second largest uh, network operator in the Netherlands, and we have uh, almost 2.8 million customers, electricity customers, and 2.3 million gas customers, gas uh, connections in the network. In the coming days, gas network will be re reduced because uh, the aim is in 2030, all the gas network uh, to withdraw all the natural gas network and we will replace it by other different other uh, type of um, yeah, warm for the heating uh, purposes, other type of network. And in the right side of the figure, you see the uh, total outage time, yearly outage time for electricity network and gas network. As you can see in 2020, we have electricity uh, outage, yearly out, uh, outage is around 13 minutes, and for the gas is 81 seconds. And in compared to the national level, national average, you can see that in the uh, figure below, right side, that in Netherlands, uh, the average level of outage time is around 21 minutes as compared to that, NXS has better performance. It is only 13 minutes. So we are really proud of our uh, reliable network. Now, the next challenge actually is the energy transition. As you know, the ambition of Dutch government is to implement more and more decentralized generations, wind turbines and solar panels in the network. And also in the coming years, electric mobility and electric heating will be more. So this will cause a lot of pressure, capacity related issues, as well as power quality related issues in the network. Moreover, NXS uh, has its operational area. A um, lot of places are in the rural areas. So that where the networks were already quite low, uh, quite old, say around 40, 50 years old, and they are a little bit weaker as compared to the grids in the cities. So these are actually uh, quite challenging for power quality issues. And as a matter of fact, you can see that in the last years, our power quality related complaints are increasing. In 2020, it already has reached 2000 numbers. And in the next year or this coming year, this, uh, this uh, running year, we think it will reach 3000. So it means that it is actually a pressure for the network operator when we receive complaints and because we need to then solve the problem as well. And mainly in the last year, we have seen that we receive um, main power quality complaints related to slow voltage variations. And that is to do actually with the uh, high voltage, uh, higher voltage than the uh, electric standard, uh, European standard EN 50160. A lot of places due to the implementation of solar panels, the voltage boundary are exceeding and which are causing uh, yeah, the exceeding of the limit values for slow voltage variations. So yeah, this problem previously we have seen in our network more flicker related issues, but now because of implementation of LED lamps, flicker problems is uh, reduced, uh, but the upcoming problems uh, generally are uh, related to also uh, harmonics. As you can see here, harmonics and asymmetry is also uh, around 10% uh, each. Um, previously it was uh, two, three, so in the coming years, we expect also more number of uh, 
complaints related to these issues. So now I would like to uh, uh, give you some insight about our interesting EV related projects. Um, it is not only the electric car, but also the heavy vehicles uh, projects related to electric buses. So mainly, uh, yeah, these are the two projects uh, where uh, Project Assured and Project Connect. These are two European projects. Uh, it is under the uh, name of uh, Horizon 2020, uh, H2020 in short, uh, where we have uh, done uh, demonstra demonstration or uh, we, we demonstrated the technology in two different sites. In the next slides, I am going to give you more information about these two projects. Besides these two European projects, we are also involved with the work group of TEPCAF where uh, ALAD is also working. They are, the, they are actually the uh, partners in this project. So we are working along with also other uh, companies, other network operators and uh, laboratorium like KEMA um, in this project. I will also tell you a little bit about that in my coming slides. And finally, we would like to also give you some simulation results. My colleague will tell you, give you more insight about the impact of on-grid due to EV. So let me first tell you about the project Assured. Um, this project is still ongoing, as you can see in this uh, uh, figure in the right side that uh, it, it's a European project and many partners, many other demonstrators are also involved. Uh, yeah, like uh, in Eindhoven uh, is the Netherlands, uh, we have the, you, uh, can you see that? Uh, uh, so uh, in Eindhoven, we have the uh, demo project. And uh, besides that, we have, in Barcelona and Osnabrück, also. Uh, can you please uh, mute yourself, uh, Celine? Yes, uh, so this is the project, uh, different project, uh, demonstration project, and the goal is uh, boosting the integration of urban commercial vehicles, heavy vehicles, and we would like to here demonstrate also the high uh, power, high power charging of uh, electric vehicles. So, uh, yeah, the expectation is the grid power quality will not be affected much due to this integration. So, as I mentioned, that in Eindhoven we have a demo site, and in that uh, demo uh, site we have uh, buses uh, at this. Uh, up until now, I think uh, half of the buses are uh, already implemented. The target is 100 uh, electric charging points to install in the site demo site of Eindhoven. And where we need to actually implement innovative uh, strategies uh, so that the charging load can be optimized. So the project is uh, still ongoing, So, uh, but uh, we have done some measurements uh, on the site and I would like to show you the some first results. Uh, as you can see here, uh, there are already 10 fast charging points uh, in the uh, at the site. Uh, each charger has 300 kilowatt of uh, power. So during the daytime when the buses are uh, running, uh, they come to the bus depot and they do uh, charging for a very small time, say for uh, 10 minutes time maximum. So we call them as opportunity chargers. And besides that, uh, in the uh, during the night time, uh, all the buses are charged at uh, 50 kilowatt uh, rate uh, charging power. And uh, in that uh, in the demo site, we have uh, already 30 more than 30 charging points, and we call them as a slow charger or depot charger. So here um, in this site, we have three transformers and each of them is 16 kVA. And uh, I just have here the picture of uh, one transformer. As you can see that in the one, in the trans this transformer has uh, four numbers of 
opportunity charging possibility um, and each of them is 300 kilowatt and every charger every uh, point has two options so basically it can also do opportunity charging for 600 and uh, yeah in the blue uh, box uh, where what you can see here uh, in the just after the transformer is the uh, distribution box dali we call them dali where we do the continuous measurement uh, it records all voltage current and also the total harmonic distortions of the network continuously so every 15 minutes data is recorded besides that we do also have uh, one power quality measurement with our um, fluke power quality meters and also yokogawa meters uh, it's only uh, done for for a week uh, just to get an impression of how the network quality is at the site due to the charging the chargers operation as you can see in the um, bottom right photo that uh, we have uh, connected these two meters to do all the measurements Uh, yeah, so as I uh, mentioned you already that, that the site is not yet complete. So we are going, uh, going to have more number of buses. So as expected, the transformers are not uh, fully loaded. As you can see in this graph, that maximum loading of each transformer is uh, 600, 700 kilowatt, while it can uh, load up to say, for example, 1500 kilowatt. So yeah, the, it is approximately 40% loaded. And also in the uh, during the night hours, as you can see here, that uh, this uh, sorry excuse me to go back. Um, yeah, as you can see here, the, in the night time, the load is very uh, low it is around 50 to 100 kilowatts so there is actually a lot of opportunity uh, for this installation to improve the capacity to a load distribution so that aim is now to implement better strategy charging strategy so that the load total loading of the transformers can be improved and uh, yeah this uh, night uh, uh, low power consumption can be uh, uplifted uh, to the normal around uh, 600 uh, 700 kilowatt so now we are in process with along with the um, company bus company and uh, also the um, charging company uh, char charger uh, uh, company they are Hel heliox uh, so they are all uh, we are working together uh, to yeah to implement uh, energy uh, management system there so that all the charging procedure can be optimized besides that uh, we also uh, have done uh, harmonics measurement as i showed you in the previous uh, slide that uh, and as you can see in this uh, figure that uh, harmonics are uh, increasing um, yeah right now harmonics is not a not a really a big concern because it is below the uh, limit values but uh, yeah the maximum values is close to 2.2 percent for the fifth harmonic and uh, seventh harmonic is also uh, close to 1.5 percent so in the coming years when more charges are included in the installation it can exceed the uh, yeah the individual harmonic uh, limits besides that we also did the supra harmonics measurement at this installation and in this uh, figure uh, uh, right bottom you can see that uh, three kilowatts three to four kilowatts in between two uh, there is around 3.5 3.6 kilowatts uh, range and also uh, between seven and eight kilowatts there are couple of supra harmonics emissions um, and yeah with the number of chargers uh, when you increase the number of chargers uh, the total emission uh, was increasing not very much but slight increase so tendency is to increase so we are really curious to see that in the coming years when more number of chargers smart um, will come um, what will be the um, amount of uh, this supraharmonic emissions 
so yeah that's all up uh, for uh, assured project and now i would like to tell you a little bit about uh, another interesting project uh, which is called connect uh, this project the demonstration site is in, uh, in another city in eindhoven it's called uh, in the den bosch uh, as you can see in the right side the picture of the demo, demo site and in the left side you see the total um, uh, yeah the uh, infrastructure of the installation uh, we have a transformer 630 kva transformers and there are many charging points and uh, only one big charging uh, for the bus uh, around 300 kilowatt maximum power uh, besides that we have here a storage possibility uh, battery and uh, Technical University Eindhoven has also developed a, a nice converter which can um, actually uh, uh, which can improve the power quality uh, of the installation. So this demo side actually is uh, the aim is to uh, make it uh, energy neutral um, as as much as possible. Therefore, we have also solar. Uh, connection solar panels in the installation and the aim is to um, when the load during the daytime increases the solar power will fit those loads so that the grid will not be uh, overloaded that is the aim and uh, in this picture what you see that as i just mentioned that uh, we have a, a in this side has a, a solar panel uh, it is of uh, 450 um, kilowatt and uh, besides that we have uh, storage also so yeah in case it is needed you can store the energy extra energy uh, in the battery and use it when it is needed so this project actually is also uh, yeah it can be seen as a uh, inspirational project and because uh, uh, this project also gives you an idea, gives us an idea that uh, um, more charging loads, uh, more charging uh, can be done in the network without uh, reinforcing the grid. So, yeah, you can get more information in this uh, Connect project site. And now I would like to tell you uh, the next interesting project, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, it's a project with ALAD. Uh, in this, pro it's a national level project. Uh, we are working with uh, many uh, partners uh, in the Netherlands, and uh, yeah, ALAD is also uh, is a very important partner in this project. So as, he, as I uh, already mentioned in my previous slides that uh, supraharmonics emissions are increasing in the grid due to charging loads. Um, yeah, so, and uh, it is expected that this type of charging loads can have uh, influence negative effect on the grid quality and can also damage uh, our network assets. Um, therefore, uh, it is uh, utmost required that we need to do something, we need to identify what is the emission and uh, how to restrict those emissions in the coming days. Uh, so the aim of this project actually is to uh, model the network, uh, to, to get some uh, insight uh, by doing a lot of uh, uh, measurement in different parts of the network and then get the data and uh, yeah, by uh, understand and then uh, understanding the nature of charges and uh, TU Eindhoven is working uh, to develop a model for the uh, AC and DC charges and this model we can then use in our network simulation tools and uh, for the planning pur purpose, this kind of model will help us uh, uh, that uh, how much emissions we can expect in the network when this kind of future loads a lot more EVs are connected in the network. So, and ultimately uh, this uh, results of this project will also be an input for the standardization committee to uh, make a standard for the indicative standard for the supraharmonic current emissions. So now, uh, yeah, I finished my part. I give it uh, to my colleague, uh, Marvin. He will tell you 
more about the impact. Floor is yours, yes. Marvin. Thank you. Yes, good uh, morning, everybody. Um, so yeah, how will we uh, be navigating the energy uh, transition going forward? Uh, during my thesis last year, we investigated uh, the impact of electrical vehicles on the power quality of the low voltage grid by uh, looking extensively into the literature and uh, doing a lot of measurements ourselves. And uh, what we found was that uh, indeed the uh, power quality was, was uh, affected by uh, electrical vehicles and uh, the most significant contributors we found were uh, single phase chargers which cause uh, imbalances in the current and uh, voltage and in general uh, a high degree of harmonics like uh, Schermistel already mentioned. Um, yeah, to a lesser degree we also found uh, super harmonics and uh, the inexplicable failures they can cause amongst uh, other loads. Uh, yeah, so knowing all this, it's uh, probably inevitable that uh, more power quality related issues will emerge in the not so distant future. And we expect a uh, significant impact on our uh, grid capacity due to high uh, charging power of uh, electrical vehicles and increased losses and uh, potentially a downtrend in the reliability and safety of our uh, distribution grid. Uh, next, please. So uh, as a grid operator, we are uh, continuously uh, updating and creating new models to make uh, forecasts about uh, the future and the impact of uh, various uh, new loads on our uh, distribution grid. Uh, but it's rather difficult to look uh, into the distant future, so we primarily focus on uh, 2030 and 2050 within uh, most of our models. Uh, looking at uh, electrical vehicles, we see a uh, exponential growth of uh, adoption and uh, we expect the EV population to reach uh, well into the millions in the Netherlands by uh, 2030. Um, yeah, what we uh, also found is that uh, large scale uh, impact analysis on uh, power quality is uh, very limited. Uh, as of yet, uh, and we are therefore uh, doing our own uh, modeling currently. Uh, next, please. Yeah, so together with uh, ALAT, we are doing a uh, impact analysis of uh, electrical vehicles on the distribution grid, and uh, we include uh, capacity and power quality uh, related uh, impact analysis in this model. Uh, yeah, this flowchart basically shows a, a simplified uh, uh, yeah, model of how we, uh, we went, uh, uh, yeah, how we created this model. Um, so we picked uh, two cases in the Netherlands, uh, one of which we also are doing a, a live power quality measurement uh, on site. And uh, we modeled the low voltage network based on uh, actual uh, annual usage by uh, all of our from all of our customers. Uh, yeah, we, within this model, we uh, created a, a scenario for uh, 2030 in which uh, heat pumps and uh, PV installations uh, reach up to 50% of all of our uh, customers. Um, and for electrical vehicles, we expect about uh, one third of all uh, uh, connections to have uh, EV chargers by uh, 2030. And uh, to model the impact of uh, harmonics, we uh, used harmonic fingerprints for uh, PV installations and uh, electrical vehicles. Uh, by using multiple uh, fingerprints for EVs, we can also uh, yeah, make uh, differentiate between uh, uh, electrical vehicles that cause a lot of uh, yeah, pollution and vehicles that uh, yeah, are relatively clean. Uh, next, please. So this is uh, an overview of uh, one of these cases, uh, one of the simulation models we have created. And uh, you can see that uh, primarily the current and voltage uh, imbalances in the bottom left uh, figures, uh, which are 
primarily uh, the focus points we are currently uh, working on in uh, in this model. Um, next, please. Yeah, so like I uh, mentioned, we're in uh, one of these cases, we're also uh, doing a live measurement currently, so we can uh, validate our uh, model. And uh, we've already found some very interesting uh, things with this uh, measurement. So, for example, on the on the top uh, figure, you can see a, a typical uh, um, rising and falling edge of the PV uh, generation window. And in the current distortion, we can uh, already see a lot of distortion in the falling and uh, rising edge of this uh, window, which is uh, which suggests that uh, inverters that are uh, not uh, yeah, generating on their full capacity cause uh, more distortion, um, which also uh, goes for smart charging of uh, electrical vehicles uh, we have found uh, during our measurements. Uh, so these are already uh, some interesting findings, uh, but we're still working on, uh, on this model uh, as of today. So. Yeah. yeah, so thank you. Uh, let me now uh, conclude. Um, thank you, Marvin. Uh, so as a DSO, we have actually a lot of challenges, as you already can see uh, from our discussion. Um, in the coming years, uh, amount of EV uh, loads will increase uh, sharply, uh, not only the electric cars, but also uh, heavy vehicles like buses, trucks, everything will be uh, 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 yeah, driven uh, with uh, ele electric power. So uh, we need to really implement um, smart charging uh, techniques in the network so that uh, we don't need to reinforce our uh, grid capacity much. So next thing is uh, we need to then keep on monitoring our grid. Um, also, not only the capacity point of view, uh, we need to uh, see the uh, how the power quality in the coming days are changing as you can uh, have seen already that un voltage unbalanced current unbalance as are the issues also the harmonics are increasing in the network um, supra harmonics is another new issue so all these are uh, making our challenges for power quality more and more in the coming years so monitoring is the best solution and uh, yeah, so we need to also participate more in this kind of uh, energy transition related pilot projects uh, so that we can gain our expertise. And um, yeah, also the practical knowledge is very important uh, because uh, while doing the pilot projects, you can see that uh, not only the uh, one issue, maybe another issue from the company, uh, from the customer itself or the neighboring customers you may get. Uh, sometimes we have also issues related to uh, PV panel, uh, PV farm, uh, solar farm ne next to the EV uh, charging point that may also interact. So we need to learn what will be the um, yeah, possible impacts on energy transitions. And um, uh, one of the most also important thing is that we should share our knowledge among various partners and other DSOs and learn from each other. Um, so by doing so, we can improve and can a take, can a, we can take a, a good step towards energy transition. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Sharmista. Thank you, Marvin, for this very interesting presentation. Um, it's now time to uh, answer any questions. Um, first of all, I do have a question myself. Um, Jamista, in the project Connect One, um, you said there was a converter from the TU Eindhoven installed, which helped to improve the, the power quality. I was wondering what kind of um, uh, power quality issues did it uh, did it solve? Uh, yeah, in the uh, in that project. Uh we have solar panels. So in the generally when the solar, uh, large amount of solar converters are switching on and off, you see also a uh, high peak, switching peak. Uh, so in that point, we have noticed also high amount of uh, total harmonic distortions. 
uh, this Russian currents. So that is one issue I think uh, can be solved uh, nicely uh, by the converter. And also another point was a lot of reactive power. We have seen also that when those converters are uh, charging or uh, yeah, feeding power, it can generate also reactive power. And converter will this uh, TU converter will be a support. Uh, so it is basically a digital twin kind of thing. Uh, it uh, reads the network uh, and it uh, it then sees that what kind of power quality uh, issues are there and then it solves it accordingly. So yeah, digital twin concept is used in this uh, converter. Okay. Nice, thank you, thank you. And um, a general question for the both of you. Um, there are some challenges coming, uh, upcoming challenges in the coming years because of uh, well, heat pumps, uh, PV panels, uh, and electric vehicles, of course. And which of these three do you consider to be the, the most important challenge, or the, the, well, the machine that can have the most impact on the grids? Uh, Marvin, you or me? I can start, but maybe then Marvin can continue as well. Um, yes. um, so uh, for me, I think, uh, yeah, right now uh, by doing analysis network simulation, we see that uh, EV loads, uh, full, cha full power charging and when large scale EVs are coming, electric vehicles, public charging and uh, private charging points are coming, then it will already have a lot of impacts on the grid capacity. and. Uh, and along with that, if heat pumps also are integrated at large scale, it will definitely collapse our grid. So I think, uh, yeah, smart charging is the first thing, what we should implement uh, efficiently. Um, and also we need to guarantee that it is not causing a lot of pollutions in the grid. And then uh, next to it, we have to also see how to uh, have uh, more, uh, yeah, the heat pumps also designed more efficiently so that, yeah, or maybe uh, localized uh, in, a, in a neighborhood uh, together, we can make a big uh, heat pump maybe, I don't know. Uh, so that can also be another solution. Marvin, you have something to add? Yeah, so uh, I think we should uh, also differentiate between uh, power quality and uh, capacity issues in this uh, case. Uh, because, uh, yeah, like Shemista mentioned, it is uh, uh, the, the load in general obviously uh, will be a problem in the future. So we have to uh, make smart choices uh, of our smart, uh, we create smart systems uh, to, uh, uh, yeah, to, to counter uh, this problem. Um, for heat pumps, we don't see a lot of uh, problems uh, in regards to power quality, but uh, electrical vehicles and uh, solar panels uh, definitely. Uh, so yeah, so how it will play out, uh, yeah, we will uh, we will see. To learn from our pilots, I think. Yeah, indeed, learn from our pilots and uh, try to mitigate the problems before they arise, of course. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. Um, there are some questions from the public. Uh, first of all, from uh, Arthur Andruskovic, who is asking, uh, who are the actors mainly complaining about uh, power quality issues nowadays? Uh, related to EV, we don't get many complaints, uh, mm -hmm. but with, with related to PV, solar panels, uh, we do get a lot of complaints, actually, uh, especially uh, in the north part of our uh, yeah, NXS grids. We have a lot of large scale implementation of solar panels. Uh, almost every house has uh, solar panels there. And there we do get uh, complaints related to uh, the, uh, yeah, the, they cannot uh, feed back to the grid because uh, the inverter is uh, switched off uh, or too high voltage. So that's why the inverter is switched off. Yeah, like this kind of issues. So yeah, we, we do uh, receive uh, complaints related to solar panels. Okay. Hey, thank you. So that shows there's really an issue we need sometimes. Yeah. Um, uh, another question from uh, Matt Bollen. Um, well, first of all, he thinks it's very interesting um, and he would like to uh, continue a discussion uh, with you, uh, you two. Um, and as a general question for now, um, did you do a kind of hosting capacity study of how much EV charging the grid can cope with? Uh, did you consider the shift to electric heating as well? well apparently you already, uh, already did. Yeah. Yeah, we are doing that uh, as well, uh, trying to see that how much uh, 
EV loads uh, can be, uh, uh, yeah, with the, with the existing capacity of the uh, each transformer, we are trying to see that how much EV loads can be uh, implemented, can, can be, uh, uh, yeah, we can allow the customers uh, to use EVs. Uh, and where it is not possible, then we have to think of other options because when a customer wants a connection, we have to provide it. Uh, so yeah, we are looking into the, it. Thank you, Matt. Excellent, excellent. Um, and another question from uh, Jill Sutaria, who will also be presenting later this day um, on uh, actually on the influence of power quality on, uh, on RCDs. And she's also asking if you have any experience with uh, RCD tripping uh, at any of your your projects. Yeah, we do RCD have. Uh, yeah, yeah. We do have other uh, projects, uh, th this kind of uh, issues. Um, yeah, maybe I can uh, discuss with you, uh, Jill, uh, later. Uh, but yeah, we have some projects. Okay, excellent. So let's see. Um, now this is an interesting question from uh, Sayan, um, who is asking, um, uh, what was the power quality uh, well measurements or, or impact in the connect project um, when solar inverters were feeding back into the grid and EV chargers were uh, while well, taking power at the at the same time? Um, did this like uh, did these distortions count up or did they face each other out or? Yeah, the problem was uh, we did all the pilots in this Corona time. And uh, that actually have impacted our pilot project. Uh, we had a lot of ambition to see that uh, maybe a lot of EV chargers will be there and uh, simultaneously charging and we can see the Im impact of PV. But uh, because there are not many EVs, uh, electric vehicles were charging at the site uh, last year, uh, we didn't see actually significant impact of PV and EVs. Uh, only here and there, as I uh, showed also in another figure that uh, some supraharmonic emissions um yeah that was no noticed but uh, uh, yeah other things were not really very significant uh, maybe in the coming years uh, we need to do another monitoring to uh, see when more number of ev chargers will be charging simultaneously and also it's a sunny day when a lot of solar panels are uh, also operating okay excellent um well i see we're well, we should actually um, actually end because um, we will start the next presentation in uh, about 15 minutes. So um, I would like to uh, to thank you for your presentations, uh, for your presentation, and well, your your answers to the questions. Um, any other open questions? Uh, we will save the the question log and we will send it to Shamista and Marvin, so um, they I can answer the questions uh, later on. Um, well, I would have, like everybody to uh, well, welcome everybody to join the next webinars today. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, well, thank, thank you. you. And uh, see you again. Bye. -bye. Bye.